Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are out here on Ponce Inlet, right on the beach. Full sun right here. Ocean's right there. Beautiful sunrise this morning. And what we're doing is we're going to waterproof the exterior of this beach house. So along this wall, they're getting water in, especially in this other corner, which I'll show you in a second. What we're going to do is go ahead and pull up a couple of pavers so we can get our pick underneath of these, remove all of these pavers all along this back wall. And then we're going to excavate that to put in our footer pipe. Same thing on this wall. The builder already came here once and tried to solve the problem. That's why you see the pea gravel. But um, as I exposed that area, they weren't quite deep enough and it just, it just didn't really get to the problem. I think the problem is over here on this wall. Here's the corner that has the water. And this water extends all the way up into the first to the second floor um, in this corner. And they've pulled the sheetrock off back there. And you can definitely see, you know, it's, it's just soaking wet back there. So as we understand how water works, and in fact, you can even see it still coming out of this block right here. Someone had drilled a hole and water's just oozing out of that block. So what we want to do is, as, as I said, as we understand how water works, is water gets sucked upwards. And what we need to do is put a footer pipe along this wall, seal that wall with our liquid rubber, and then of course put it all back together. Let's go ahead and get started. You can see everybody's starting to get their thing done. Chuck's pulling back some mulch. We're gonna haul that old pea gravel away because it's just in the way, excess dirt. We'll go in this vacant lot because they fill the lots here with soil. So that'll be fine to dump over there. And there's one more section out front that we're going to look at as well, but this should come out pretty quick. Up here in the front, this will be the end of that footer pipe. Remember, it starts around back. It's going to come all the way around. We're going to put a sump basin right here. Even though we have pretty good fall going out to that street, this footer is about 16 inches deep and that seems to be code out here on the beach. They have to have a major footer to hold these things up. And <clears throat> so sump basin, and then we'll have an inch and a half pipe to discharge you know, out to that side. They also have another problem similar to a crawl space problem. Underneath of this uh, porch, there is storage and it's actually all cement floor, but blocks are holding water. And the same kind of thing, you know, as a crawl space with a sealed floor, we're going to excavate along this wall and put in footer pipe, seal it, and we're going to run gravity discharge off of that wall. It's just a small section, go under the walk, and then all the way out there toward the street. Back here, we're still removing pavers, and in just a few seconds here, we'll be able to start trenching. Just a lot of prep work. Some jobs, there's a lot of prep work. Some jobs there's not. When you're digging through this hard pack stuff, they pack this down. This should be pretty simple. The pick should go right through it and or the shovel. And again, we need a, about a foot wide so we can get down you know, to the footer. This footer is about 16 inches deep. It's double a double footer. And I'll show you a picture of that um, on the new build across the street where you can see it. Um, but yeah, this is a, a real solid footer. We've got to get all this off of here, clean it off, and then paint that wall with the liquid rubber, and it should, should take care of the problem. Over here, you can see the builder put in a French drain. Um, it's just a perforated pipe surrounded with a cloth, and then he, he poured pea gravel on there, which it's only been in there a month, so it didn't have a chance for the sand to clog up that pea gravel, but the entire system needs to be encased. Um, that's one of the problems that we see when people do this themselves, even the builder. Um, you've got to encase the gravel if you're going to use gravel because your sand or clay or whatever is just gonna fill up that gravel and the system won't work. Remember, water floods up through the gravel, through your aggregate, into the holes of the pipe and is carried away. The cloth protects the pipe, but what protects the gravel? It has to be encased. That's why today we use that easy flow because everything's already encased. The aggregate is a peanut pipe. So on this section, Chuck's been pulling out what the builder put in and you can see they put lots of pea gravel in here, which is now just in the way. It's just totally in the way. You can see some things here that were causing problems. I don't know what exactly this is. Some kind of a fabric 
of liner that they've got underneath of the floor. Real wet back here, real wet. Um, what we're doing is we're trying to get rid of that gravel and get it out of the way. This is just slow going. It's not that it's hard digging, but you can see all the obstacles in the way. So as you dig, be careful you don't get it in the AC and stuff like that. But just do what you got to do to get it out of here. And then we'll take some other soil from over here where these two guys are digging <clears throat> along the paver wall. <clears throat> Beautiful little trench going down through here. And looking real, real good. About 15 more feet to go. Then we'll be able to clean that wall and start to seal it. So we were just talking about the science of digging. And um, you know, I grew up as a competitive swimmer and there was a book by a man named Doc Councilman. He was the coach of University of Indiana, trained people like Mark Spitz and things like that way back in the 70s. And he wrote a book called The Science of Swimming. It changed the sport. Take a look at where Jason's been digging. You notice how wide that trench is and a lot of extra labor to get. Now there may have been some overpour, maybe he had to do that. But now notice that the trench is back to a shovel wide because that's really all we need. You take a look down here, you'll notice again, we've got a nice shovel wide trench right to the bottom of the footer. When you're doing this yourself and you're getting tired, it could be because you're digging too much. And I don't want you to think that you don't need to dig enough, but you know, do exactly what you have to do. You can always come back and widen it, things like that. But the science of digging, okay, there really is a science. Maybe I should write a book about that. <laughs> so we're just about ready to go ahead and start cleaning this off. <clears throat> we've got all the gravel, you know, of course you see some, but we've got all the gravel removed. And you can kind of see what happens on a, a pour of a footer. You see this major overpour right here. And they they actually did seal it right here. They sealed where the stucco meets the footer. Remember on how this is built. Right here, there is a four inch block and it's solid stone, solid block. And above my hand begins the hollow block. So this is the actual wall. And the floor is at, the top of the floor is right there. It's at that level. We want to make sure we seal above the floor so we're going to be way, oops, <laughs> we're going to be way up here when we put our sealant on to make sure that that stucco is not letting that water get inside. And back here where Joe's at, he's just got a few more feet, clean it out. Probably could scrape it out right now instead of digging, just scrape it all out. Start one side or the other, and he's got that. And we'll be ready to clean this off. We'll take a little break. I'm not sure what time it is. It's probably about 9.30. And it looks like we're, you know, almost done, but really this is not the hard part and um, the hard part is all of course always putting it back together sealing it getting your pipe laid those type of things that takes the longest once your trench is all dug take some time and you know really clean this thing out you want to we're not too concerned about the cement that's on the footer we want to get where that stucco is meeting that footer we may come back if we need to with a wire brush whatever it takes we've got to get that clean so that our sealant can actually seal it up and um, we always you know sometimes you don't see us scraping and all that but we always get it really clean and um, we'll put that liquid rubber on there and we should be set and ready to go so again we've got it really nice and clean looking good <clears throat> you do notice that we are in a sandy base and you can see all the water that's laying down in there and that tells me groundwater is really high you can see what they've done here is they've painted the stucco and it is a good paint but it's a sticky sticky stuff and we've got to really get this sealed right here right where the stucco meets this footer this is solid concrete not concerned about sealing that at all There's no water is getting up through there at all but it is getting sucked up right along here which was below grade you can see where the grade line was right there you can see the mark and but yeah for a permeable sand, you can see it's drying up quick, but that water table is pretty high. Okay, here along the front porch, as you can see, here's the front porch. Remember, this is kind of like a crawl space behind here. It's all block, it has a cement floor. 
and we see efflorescence, which means that there's water in the block inside. What we're gonna do is we're gonna seal this wall, but there is so much overpour. This is a massive house on the beach, a lot of concrete. This is all overpour and footer all along here. <clears throat> so we're just gonna clean it all off. We'll start our French drain or footer pipe right here at this depth. You can see we're down about 18 inches or so. Um, dig out. This is going to be gravity. Pull up these plants, mulch, go under the walk, and it'll discharge, you know, almost out there by the street. Okay, so now we're setting up the Zoller M98. We start with a male threaded inch and a half adapter that screws into this port. Screw it in there as tight as you can with your hand. Perfect. Next we're going to start put a riser on here. We want to clear this bar. So we're going to come up about this high and then we'll put a check valve on there. Check valves only allow water to flow one direction. So we need some glue. I also drilled a 3 16th inch hole as a pressure relief because air can get trapped between the pump and the check valve. So let's go ahead and put this guy in there. Perfect. Then we'll put our no hub adapter on there with the arrows pointing upwards. Then using your handy dandy black and decker with a 5 16 inch nut driver, we tighten up these clamps. Just as tight as that drill will make it. We loosen this one because it's going to have an extension. We want to be able to accept the riser as it comes up and then we'll have a 90 as it comes out of the sump basin we're ready to put this in the pit now i'm going to use a two inch hole saw this is going to be the discharge of that pump we want to get it just underneath the top of this lip Now I can plumb the discharge from the sump pump. So, not much room to work here, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna glue up this discharge pipe. Good amount of PVC cement. Careful that you don't spill your glue. I'm guilty of that quite frequently. As you can see, it lines up perfectly. Just slide it in, twist and hold it, and we're set. So you can take a look. <clears throat> Sump pump installed. Got our first riser. Remember, we drilled a 3 16 inch hole in that first riser. We've got a check valve, arrows pointing upwards. I think they're on this side somewhere. Anyways, arrows pointing upward. Clamped it tight, tightened up all our clamps. Discharge. Now I can put the lid on here and tape it and they can go ahead and cover when they get to this section. Okay, tunneling the sidewalk. Showed you guys this many times. Takes about 10 minutes, maybe 15. A lot of prep work to get started. We dig a trench long enough where we can get the big shovel down underneath. We're going to scrape from the top. In other words, we're going to scrape at the bottom <laughs> of the sidewalk so the top of the sidewalk we scrape that pull under pull out the dirt do it on both sides you'll be through here in just a few minutes so if you can see the shovel i'm just going to scrape the top right here do it hard and then we're going to come back and we'll just scrape out the excess kind of hard to get my camera to sit here where you can a little bit there okay so i'm going to scrape the top and then come back and just take out as much as you can get. It'll start to come out of there. A few rocks right here. But the secret is to get the top and you'll be able to go right through there. Then 
come back, and I see a sprinkler head right here to the side of the trench. Always something in your way. We go as far as we can go with this big shovel, and then we use the little shovel. And it just finishes it right up. So I'm about halfway with the big shovel. Let's go get that little shovel. I'm about halfway with this shovel. Let's go get the little shovel and we'll finish. So now I'm going to use the smaller shovel. What I mean by smaller, it has a narrower, it's six inches wide. Again, scrape the top break it loose, come back, and you just get out a small amount, but that's fine. This side has a little bit of rocks in it. They slow you down. But with a little bit of effort, you should be able to get right through there. Yep, already through. There it went, all it went right through. Now we just need to make it wide enough for a four inch pipe. You just twist it, pull it out, get the dirt out, and you'll have it. That might be it, let's take a look. So you can see, put this under there, and you can see our hole. Yeah, let it focus, there we go. We've got a nice four inch opening all the way through. We'll be able to push our pipe right underneath of there. So again, a little bit of effort, it takes two shovels. You use the regular shovel as far as you can, and then you come back, we call this a sharpshooter shovel, but it's a trenching shovel. It's uh, 16 inches long by six inches wide, and it makes a real nice, easy hole to get through. So this sidewalk's done, a little bit more of a trench up there, and we'll be ready to lay this pipe. Okay, so it's about nine o'clock. We're about over halfway done. Um, each person's working on a section. I've been out here in the front, and starting here in the corner, let's take a look. Again, this is a crawl space, just a storage area under the front porch. It's all enclosed, block walls, cement floor, efflorescence on the wall. That means there's water getting in. So we're gonna put footer pipe here, seal that wall, and then it changes to gravity. And that's just gonna be a four inch solid pipe. You saw me go under the walk. And then we'll continue this on out into the mid yard out here someplace because it's got plenty of fall for it to discharge. We're ready to set the lid on. <clears throat> Showed you with the GoPro, but I'll show you on the other camera here. This is my phone. <clears throat> We've got sump pump installed in the bottom, small riser, three sixteenths inch hole drilled in there as a pressure relief. Again, pressure relief is important. This is a very powerful pump. When it kicks on, it can actually airlock because there's water sitting in the top of this pump and there's a valve there that opens and closes. So it, when it kicks on, it sucks air, it, it'll stop, it won't pump, it'll just run. So you need that pressure relief. Um, so now we've got that, we've got our check valve, arrows pointing upwards, then we've got a small riser above that, the 90 degree turn, all glued, drilled, and you can see where we're going out. We haven't connected the rest of that line, but we're ready to go ahead and put the lid on and cover this up to this point. So we backfilled the area, Got our pump right here, we'll clean that off. A Little bit more clean up here in the mulch bed. And we're just about out of here. So all we do is just grade the area off. It comes back, repacks, puts the stacks of pavers back and it's all done. Real nice little job. Great do-it-yourself project. Again, you know, we did this all in a day. Might take the homeowner two, three days, but you can definitely do it yourself and save a good 10, 15,000. You do it yourself. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.